Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And today we have two special guests. I think that's the first time you've ever had two special guests at the same time on the show. It is, well, we have Larry Bobko, who you're familiar with, and then we also have Eric Childs here. Eric um, is a head pro at uh, Chaska Town Course. Yep. Director and, of instruction. And um, a very good competitive player in Minnesota PJ section as well, and recently has a couple of really good finishes we'll talk about. But uh, first, I'll let Eric introduce himself a little bit and cover the things that I did not say there. Oh, sure. Uh, well, I'm Eric Childs. I'm the director of instruction at Chaska Town Course. Uh, I've been there 13 years. Uh, my job is to teach and, you know, kind of be involved with mm-hmm. all the instruction at the facility. Uh, but yeah, and then on the side, I still play competitively, um, love playing competitively. Um, so yeah, that's I mean, that's what I do. Yeah, just a golfer. That's kind of yeah, what everybody here yeah, in yeah. Second Swing is, right? That's our yeah, part no, of <laughs> absolutely. And you know, when when I moved to uh, Minnesota and started playing uh, Chaska through Aaron Roth, one of yep. our fitters, you know, got to meet Chili. Well, just might as well throw the might as the well nickname. throw your nickname yeah. out already. Yeah, um, you know found out about how competitive he is, how great of an instructor he really is. And for me, you know, kind of doing the same thing in my life, you know, it's always fun. And, you know, like we said earlier, we probably have spent more time having a cocktail talking about golf swings and players than than we have really out on the golf course together. Um, But, you know, that's that's the cool part. And I love people like like Chili because you know he's he's so into golf he's so into the competition um, he, he's so into being a good player and and you know and one of the things that you know we kind of talked about in his playing competitiveness was a little lack of distance off the tee you know felt like that was the one thing that might have been holding you back because we worked on putting together and you know you, you roll the ball great you know change did a little loft change on on his putter just to to get it rolling a little bit better, but you know, it's kind of time. So what happened was, so now we actually go play one day. First time we've ever played in four years because wow. one of my best friends, I sent him to Chile for lessons. Sure. He had tried a lot of instructors in the Minnesota area. Um, he's a little particular <laughs> without yeah. using some other terms for, <laughs> yeah. for him. He, well, yeah. he's an ex Air Force pilot. So, you know, typical pilot, they're just, yeah. they're, all about that... pre- they're all about precision, yeah. right? Um, so we ended up playing golf one day over at Chaska, and then he's like, yeah, he goes, he goes, Chili's going to join us. I'm like, perfect. So first time we ever got to play golf. Yeah. And then, um, you know, he played really well, hit a lot of shots, but, you know, I, I, for lack of a better term, to me, his driver flight looked a little poofy. You know? <laughs> that is, that's the first time I've heard that term yeah, to yeah. describe a golf well, shot. Just, <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah, it, it just it just kind of it just kind of was kind of high and soft, where everything else in the bag was was very driving and precision, and you know all his shots were so good. And you know he pulled the driver out, you know, and I asked him a couple times. I go, "Do you like that flight?" And he's like, "Well, it's okay, you know." It finds fairways, but I'm like, dude, I got something better for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, I, I suppose you're probably thinking about that stuff all the time. And, and oh, yeah. well, Eric, too, like, is that, you probably didn't anticipate that when you played with him. Like, you're not thinking oh. anything about your bag. And this is just no. a, a student that you had, and you guys are just out playing around yeah. golf. And yeah. I know you're you're competitive, but you probably weren't thinking <coughs> on, that, on that side of things, I guess, for your own game, probably. Well, yeah, I mean... I think like most competitive golfers, I'm probably sick with my competitiveness. Well, so yeah. I'm always <laughs> trying to get better. So when we were out, I just my main concern was uh, I just wanted to I wanted to show Larry that I could roll it. Yeah. And so my main thing was like I want to I want to bury a lot of putts today and play good and and then if he says hey you know well, what about this or that like I'm I'm always open sure. to to listening uh, and. In getting better, so um, I was putting really well, yep. which was good. And it was funny because I was putting really poorly coming into that. Uh, but then I, I don't know. It was kind of when we were we were done. Yeah. He, you know, when he asked about the driver, it was like, "What do you think?" I'm like, "My driver just is what it is, man. Like it flies. 
anywhere from 246 to 250 and it stops at about 260 and you know I'm going 100 101 2 miles an hour and I've been badgering Larry for probably nine months. I was like, I see videos of Rocco with the same club that's beating me and he's carrying it 260. <laughs> Why don't I carry 260? And so we got done and that's when he said, it. he's like, you know, I might have a, yeah. a shaft for you to try. And, and I was like, done, you know, like, yeah. cause as far as I was concerned with hitting on my track man out of Chaska, I was hitting it about as efficiently as I could with, right. with what I had. And, and I'm not, it's funny, I, like I teach, but I don't fit. Yeah. Like, I'm not a fitter. And people ask me all the time, hey, do you fit clubs? And I'm like, no. Go to Larry. Go to the guys at Second Swing because you guys have forgotten more than I know about fitting. I mean, I'm, I'll stay in my lane. I teach. Um, and so when he said that, I was like, yeah, well, whatever you got, I'll try it. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, because well, that's kind of what sparked this whole thing is Larry, you know, was obviously we had, you had the good finish. Let's just talk about that right now. So the Minnesota Senior PGA, you ended up winning that with a really, really good second round. And then you were right up there too in the Minnesota PGA section championship as well. I ended up finishing runner up there. So two really good finishes after this change was made, yeah, right? So which gets you to the national PGAs now. Yep. Yeah. So when is that, by the way? Uh, the senior is late October. Okay. In a couple months down in Port St. Lucie. And then the, uh, the national CPC for the all ages is in, uh, I think it's in, April? Oh, yeah, okay. April. Oh, April, April down, down in, in Texas. In oh, Frisco, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. Down at their new facility down so there. So talk to me about, maybe Larry can fill me in on the details of the driver that he was playing, the shaft and the head, and then what the, what change was made. I, I don't even know what shaft, honestly, I don't even know what shaft it was. All I know <laughs> is I hated it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it would go out there and it would just kind of, it would just kind of float and kind of come down and, you know, you know, until he's got a beautiful swing and, you know, he hits a lot of really good solid shots, but I'm like, man, that's just not, you know, and after a couple, after about three or four holes, I'm like, okay, what do I, what do I got? What do I got at the store? What do I got at home yeah. that would help him out? Well, fortunately, my, my, uh, my guys at, at UST, uh, Jason Landry, who's the, who's the tour rep, you know, send, usually sends me some stuff for me to try. And, you know, I've got one of the players at the U playing one of their shafts mm -hmm. now, too. And so I'm like, yeah, I still think I got one. I think I got one that, that'll work for you. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, it's going to bring your flight down. It's yeah. going to give you a little more dis. It's going to give you a little more pop. So. So we played on a Monday. So Tuesday, I brought it into work. I put a tip on it, put a grip on it for him, took it out. I think I took it out on Tuesday for you, or maybe Wednesday when I, because I was playing playing yeah, was, league in the okay. afternoon. I think it was Wednesday. So you know, I got done, you know, played golf, and I'm sitting, you know, sitting in the bar, and you know, <laughs> and all of a sudden he comes in with he comes in with his he comes in with his pad, you know, his iPad. Oh yeah. From his trackman numbers, he's like. Dude, look at this. This is 12 yards long or carry. He goes, how does that happen? Well, it's not poofy anymore. <laughs> it's not poofy anymore. <laughs> it's not poo you know, it's a little, it's definitely more stable in the tip. It's, it's a shaft that, that is gonna give you a little bit more, you know, a little more, more to it, you know? And, and for him, who's a very solid, smooth swinger, sometimes we get locked into something that feels good. Yeah. You know, and you kind of sometimes got to jump out of that realm a little bit. I mean, we get that all the time. You know, players come in and it's like, oh, you know, I got to try this. Or, you got to try that header. You got to try that. Well, the head he had was pretty good. Titleist TS. Yeah, it was the, the four. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, his, okay. I mean, so his driver, you know, his driver head was pretty good yeah. for him. The I mean, flight, if, it's, if it's a four, it's, it's kind of designed yeah. to be a penetrating well, and ball he, And he knows bit. too. I mean, like he said, you know. Hey, I was pretty optimal on my track, man, yeah. with what I had. So now it's just a little tweak of the shaft to give it a little bit, a little bit extra pop. And um, you know, to me, that's you know, that's what we do. I mean, that's what I've done for hell forty-two years is watch people play, watch people play golf, and try to make them better. Yeah. You know, and and I don't know. You know, sometimes it's just I just think when I watch somebody, just an inherent ability to just go. Well, that's wrong. 
<laughs> I know yeah. what's right. I well, know, I when know you have what, as many years of experience, you know, well, I know it's, yeah, you know, you there's see, things you that you just watch. Yeah, you, you see a lot of golf out. shots, and, you know, the advantage is I've seen so many good players for so many years. You know, you're still still working with good players with coaching at the U. I mean, geez, I saw one of our kids hit a drive downwind. It was windy on Monday, and it's hot and dry out at Windsong for practice. It went 392. That's, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that'll work. Yeah, I, mean, I, I drove up in the cart, and I'm like, dude, this is just stupid. That is what golf is now, though. Yeah, I mean, it's just, but, but you take somebody like Tilly, who's, you know, in your early 50s, very competitive player. Hey, let's make you a little bit better. Let's just find yeah. something that works. So, you know, and it, and it just worked out really well. And like you said, you know, now it just gives you a little bit more firepower to maybe get to some of those par fives, to hit a club or maybe a club or even two clubs less into mm -hmm. a par four and, you know, more chances for birdies. Is that was there, were you thinking that maybe driving, uh, you know, distance that extra 12, 15 yards is what you needed, or was that not even on your mind as you were kind of? Because I know I was kind of looking up at your results, and you were right there all year, just hadn't quite put it together for like for the win or for the runner-up even. So I was, you know, is that something that was on your mind, or was it um, not really not out of that wasn't something you were thinking about until Larry maybe brought it up? Yeah. I, I... I, I'll try and make it a quick version. So three years ago, I got a hold of like a rip stick and started speed okay. training. Sure. And I went from 101 miles an hour and then worked for, it was 12 weeks. I was gaining 0.7 miles per hour per week with an absurd amount of working out yeah, yeah. and eating right. And so I got up to 108, 109. And then I went to the, the national club pro as a senior and, you know, carrying it 270 versus 240, like, like you're a different animal. Right. And so I could hit par fives and, and come in with an eight iron instead of a hybrid. And that's how I got to the senior PGA was just, it was just sheer distance. Yeah. So then later I get injured because I'm, you know, I'm redlining all, I, I'm trying to hit as far as I can all yeah. the time. And now I'm getting old and you can't, there's a, there's a fine line. <laughs> sure, sure. So I get hurt. I spend a whole year injured all of last year and then I get healthy and so really this was like, well, how can I stay at 102, 103, not hurt myself, but get the most I can. Got ya. <clears throat> and so it really came back to where at my best three years ago, I'm carrying it 270. And now I can, I can carry it with that shaft 260, 263, which seven yards is fine, right? Yeah. But that's still 25. I mean, it, like it, when you're carrying it 240, it's just, it's so right. hard. Right, and so kind of in a way, you know, you might be hitting the ball in the fairway off. I mean, sure. almost every hole. Yeah. But you're still behind, and you're hitting more club in than maybe some of your competitors a little bit. Yeah. And so I, I imagine that was kind of a, a big difference. And I, did you have another sense of confidence maybe in these last couple of events as you stepped up to the yeah. tee, knowing I have an extra 15 yards that I didn't have a few weeks ago? Yep. There, there's two things. One is I could swing as hard at, at this shaft as I could. The old shaft I had, I couldn't. I would hit a high, floofy left shot. Floofy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's floofy. It's yeah. floofy. And so, so I could just stomp on it, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't go left. And, you know, I was like, I was taking the blame. Like, why when I swing hard do I do that? Yeah. And then Larry's like, try this. And then I stomp on it, and it doesn't, doesn't go left. And yep. then I'm a lefty, so if anybody's out there is wondering oh, sure. why I'm saying high and left. But uh, then the other thing is, is that that carry when you're playing, I'll say when you play on big boy courses, like at the National Club Pro, Yeah, I played one in Oregon where it was 7650, right? That's so, I mean, that's like, a lot. That's absurd. <laughs> yeah. So we're playing at the Wilderness, which is at 7,100, but a lot of those holes, they go out and down and then it comes back up at 240 to 50 and then it levels out and then goes back down. So there was a couple holes coming in where I could carry it to the downslope mm. and roll out to 305. Yeah. Where, you know, if I'm not, if I don't have that, if, I got, if I'm carrying a 245, I'm hitting hybrid in yeah. instead of eight iron. Right. And so it's, it's just, yeah, it's just how can you not be confident when you know you can carry it to an area where you'll get that extra rollout? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? and, and by the way, the shaft is a, a UST link six at six s okay it's their new one it's their four i think they call it 40x or so okay. you know i'm sure we can find a picture and sh 
show yeah, it in, yeah, show it in the podcast. Yeah, what yeah. It, in case anybody, anybody's out there want to try it. But, you know, it was just something that, again, just more stable in the tip. Mm -hmm. Something that when he wanted to go at it a little bit, it, it's not going to float on him. It's going to stay. It's going to launch high. You know, keep the spin where he needs to be. Maybe even lost a little bit of spin, but you could yeah. you could you can live with that because you launch it so high. You know, and, and it was just to me something that you know he's gonna he's gonna play better golf with. Yeah, and he's gonna get more out of his golf swing. You know, the thing I hate the worst is to watch somebody hit golf shots in work on their swing and not get not get the results they yeah. want. There's still something out there to Because to get. their golf equipment, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, I've said it a million times in our podcast and video. I mean it's like trying to eat soup with a fork. <laughs> I mean it yeah. just it doesn't work. Oh, this work. is Larry's it, favorite. Yeah, it there? doesn't is, work. It's so I, good. You know, I, I had you know I had a guy putting on Sunday morning and you know, and he's like, Man, I just work at it, I work at it, I work at it. dude, your putter sucks. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. I mean, there's the reality of it that, you know, you can only put so much in. I mean, you can only help somebody so much yeah. before, you know, with their golf swing. But if but if everything doesn't match up, you know, we always looked at it. We always looked at it in when I started at uh, Titleist. It's kind of this triangle where you've got. You got the player, you got the instructor, and you got the club fitter. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's kind of, we've kind of added some points to it where, you know, now you got the yep. nutrition guy, you got the, the fitness, fitness guy, <laughs> you got the you got the, the sports psychologist there. So, you know, there's, there's a little bit more to it to becoming a good player, but you've got to have all that because if you don't connect all those points, you're really going to struggle playing. You know, and, and that's one of the things that, that modern players and, and, you know, I can't tell you, I mean, you have it the same way. The people that come in and go, you know, I'm a seven or a nine. I want to be scratched. How do, how do I, how do I become, well, you got to look at every aspect. Okay. You got to look at your instruction. You got to look at, mm -hmm. you got to look at your equipment, you know. How's your short game? How much time do we practice? Yeah. You know, if you want to get better, you have to look at all sides of it. You can't just, you know, you can't just look at one side of it and go, oh, I'm going to get better. You know, and one of the things I found early on is sitting there watching players, and this is back in the 80s when we were still fitting persimmon and bolada and steel <laughs> shafts, and, you know, we didn't have as many options as we have now. But you watch it, and you watch a player take a lesson, and the instructor's got them doing exactly what they want them to do, and it's not you're not getting any results. Yeah. I mean, I saw it when I was a club pro in the early '80s. I mean, that's why I got into club fitting. It's because you know I'm I thought I was a pretty good instructor, and you know I'm getting and you know and Mr. Smith still can't get the ball in the air with his driver. Well, you know, hey, maybe I'll build up a few different driver heads with different lofts and different shafts. All of a sudden, I hand him another club, and Mr. Smith starts hitting it in the air. And I'm yeah. like, ooh, there's more to this than just how good I can teach. Right. You know? It's probably a, a perfect marriage that can be had if you're really serious about getting better. And this works for any level. Absolutely. Player, but, you know, the marriage of going to see an instructor, someone like Eric, that knows how to right. optimize your swing. And then there's optimizing the, the equipment as well. And both of those together that are, again, they optimized, um, making sure they're optimized will help you play better and you will see lower scores yeah no totally I mean it just you have to do that and you know here's a perfect example of a guy that plays at a very high level with a little bit tweak in a shaft all of a sudden has one confidence goes up yeah you for know sure. distance goes up a little bit but now he's got the ability to stand on a hole when he's got to hit it hard and not hit a poofy drive. Yeah. <laughs> Which I've been there before, by the way. When you're up on a tee shot and you feel like you almost have to guide the ball out there and you can't sure. swing that hard because you're afraid of the high spinny, you know, mm -hmm. for me, right ball, you left ball. I've been there and it's not it's not fun to have that. And I know I guarantee there's somebody listening or watching this right now that feels that same way. So oh, yeah. there's a there's you know, it might just be one shaft tweak in and out of the of the driver and it's fixed. Well, it's a game you have to give up control to gain control. I mean, you got to be willing to stand up there and let it go. But you have to have confidence that what you have in your hand works. Mm -hmm. You know, 
I mean, we've got, like I said, my friend that kind of originally set up, I played golf with him yesterday. You know, and I'm telling you, this this guy, and I won't say his name, Jim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jim's but, on the hot seat here. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, a little, a little stubborn and, you know, but he's out. I mean, I played with him yesterday morning, and he's swinging the club better than ever. And he hits a beautiful iron shot. He puts a beautiful iron shot on the first hole, and he goes, oh, thank you, Chili. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's the kind of, you know, that's the kind of thing. He's got his clubs in his bag are fit by me. He's got instruction now that is helping him mm -hmm. really get better. And there's a confidence in him now to go outside. He won the super... To tell you won the super senior oh, nice. won the super he won the super senior at bluff creek nice yeah so you know and basically by sh <laughs> shooting his age i mean he's he's wow. 75 he's yeah that's, maybe that's 70, impressive maybe 76 he's 75 or 70 shot 75 yeah you know there you go that's impressive it's a, it's impressive and you know but he works at play mm -hmm. i mean geez plays virtually every day yeah you know but so, you know, that's the one thing that, you know, I wanted to do this is, is it's just to kind of impress on people that no matter what level you're at, yeah. you can get better. And if you want to get better, then you really need to kind of put that triangle or square or whatever together to, to become a better player, mm -hmm. you know? And, and the really cool thing <clears throat> that, I, that I look at and, you know, myself, Aaron Roth, we send a lot of people to see Eric after mm -hmm. fittings because it's like, hey, we've done as we've done our part as the club fitter. There's a few things we see in your swing that, you know, that's not what we do for a living. Send him his way because he's gonna tweak them and he's gonna he's gonna make it he's gonna make it better. So sure. it's really it you know, it works so well um, to get this to get this group or this team together. I mean, that's what all you hear about tour players now is talking about their team. Yep. Right. You know, my team of guys, my team that's going to help me get better. Well, I mean, if you're a serious player where there's tons yeah. in Minnesota, which, you know. You guys are probably on several golfers' teams right now, if you will, in that, in absolutely. that sense, you know? Absolutely. But that's that's where that's where it is, and that's how you that's how you get that's how you get better. Mm -hmm. So one thing I want to do before wrrapping is actually because you're a winner and one of the things we love to do at, uh, at second swing wow, is well you are a recent winner and one of the things we love to do at least on the we cover largely you know PGA Tour and LPGA Tour just for fun we put together what's in the bag right uh, then sure. we cover that so just for fun I want to you know ask you about the clubs in your bag and and maybe give the viewers a little insight into that and you know how you know the hybrids you play irons you know the setup that you have um, that uh, I know the viewers and listeners will be curious about sure. Uh, wow. Well, uh, the, the Titleist driver is a, mm -hmm. what was it, a nine degree? I think it's at nine and a half. Uh, then I got a three wood, mm -hmm. uh, with 15 degrees. Okay. And then this is a funny part. So I'm 52, yeah. right? And I don't have a lot of speed. So I have a 19 degree hybrid, 23 degree hybrid and a 27 degree hybrid instead of a five iron. So I don't have enough power even to honestly get the most out of a five iron. And there are tons of people that come to me for golf lessons, right. and I mm -hmm. go, "Hey, man, you don't have the gas for the, <laughs> right, the, right. the four and yeah. the three and three the two. Irons, get rid yeah. of those." Uh, we see those same yeah. guys. We oh, see those. Know, we see yeah. those same I players. I, I <laughs> but uh, and then six iron to wedge are uh, T one hundreds. Okay. And then uh, then when I get into the wedges, Gra graphite chaps though. Yeah, yeah. Graphite I have steel chaps. Steel fibers. Okay. Steel fibers. Oh, yeah, the steel 95s. fibers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which um, those are really, really when I good. saw, yeah. I saw, I was funny. I felt kind of bad that I had those. I was like, oh, I'm getting old. And then uh, Bob Estes had them. Yeah. So yeah. I was playing with him and that senior PJ. I'm like, wow, ah, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, he's got them. <laughs> well, actually, uh, Kevin Kraft, who is um, one of our fitters out in Maryland, pro player, he won the Pennsylvania State Open. Right. Uh, a couple few weeks ago, yeah. he also plays steel fiber yeah. Um, yeah. in his Cobra iron, so they're and they I, work. I yeah. just saw Jim Furyk switch to him too, yeah, steel see? fiber. So yeah, right. they work. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a great you know what it's a great iron shaft for a good player. Yeah. you know it, it's it's same thing. It's kind of like the UST shaft that I gave him. A little bit tighter on the dispersion, a little better on the feel. You get a little bit less weight. A little bit more kick at the mm -hmm. bottom, and you just just help. And you flight your irons great. I mean, I absolutely love the way you hit your irons because they're just they're 
they're that medium high yeah. dart. Yeah, they're not wavering one way. I mean, they're and just... again, a guy that hits medium high dart shouldn't hit a poofy driver. <laughs> <laughs> so then, in, in the short game, I'm also curious now too, since you know you're working with Larry on that stuff. What's the the wedge and putter setup like? Uh, wedge, I switched from the TS pitching wedge. I got rid of that, and then I have Vokey, 48, 52. 56, and then okay. I have a 60 with a K grind, super wide sole. Yep, yep. And then if I know I'm playing a course that's got raised greens, say we're playing in Florida or something's weird, then I got a 64, Ooh. like an old 64 wow. that I do a lot of horsing around yeah. with lately, <laughs> ripping them back. And everybody's into that now with uh, Mayo talking to helping mm -hmm. um, Victor Hovland and, yeah. and yeah. attack angle of down 10, 11 without taking a divot, and that confuses people. Yeah. Right. So I, like that's kind of my thing lately is horsing around with that and again it's it's for show I don't know a little that experimental but if you need it you know yeah, you, can, yeah. you can throw it in the bag <laughs> but uh, but yeah I love my wedges uh, if somebody says you you know what do you got to keep in that bag just leave my wedges alone just leave yeah. my wedges alone my putter all the other stuff like you know I'm particular but like I think that's probably how every I mean every at least competitive player that's you know doing this in a in some sense for a living is it has to be somewhat particular about their stuff and you get comfortable yeah. with stuff it's about being comfortable but not maybe complacent i guess well is probably and, the way and if it. you think about it drew you know between the driver the wedges and the putter it's about 75 percent yep. of your shots i know you love to give me that, that spiel too yeah in the <laughs> round of golf i mean if you can drive it wedge it and put it you can go on you, you know yeah. you can score pretty darn well mm -hmm. you know and i you know I say, it, but you know, there's there's been an Instagram thing floating around with Trevino talking about it. Somebody asked Trevino, you know, why are you so good? Well, I grew up at a I grew up at a driving range. I hit drivers on the driving range, and then it, they had a little nine hole par three that the longest hole was 100 yards. He goes, so all I did all day long was either drive it, wedge it, and putt it. Yeah. And he goes, if you do that, and if you do the stats, you know, Dave Pels did all the stats in the you know in his short game bible you know 10 15 years ago and you look at it it's 75 percent that's 75 percent of the shots you play you know yeah. sometimes we obsess about our irons and our hybrids and whatever but it ultimately those are to get us close to the green where we can wedge it and putt it right absolutely well i think that's a that's a good way to wrap it we got some really cool insight i mean this all stemmed from one shaft change but Obviously, it's awesome to see Eric get those get that win and uh, qualify for the National PGA event. So good luck in those. We'll be Thanks. rooting you on, uh, golfers. If you're in the Minnesota area and you need, you want to maybe know where you can optimize your swing a little bit and get some instruction, we'll, we'll recommend Eric right here. If uh, if Larry and Aaron are sending people there, it's obviously a really good idea, right? And then of course, if you need some club fitting insight, you know where to go there too. Go to Second Swing, schedule a fitting online, um, or you can stop in one of our stores here in the Twin Cities um, or any of our stores throughout the country and we'll get you set up. So Eric, thanks for joining and, and Thank you. on. Yeah, Appreciate uh, good it. luck in those events. And Larry, thanks, I'm man. sure we'll yeah. see you down the road here too. So. Absolutely. <laughs>